So I would, I would say autoimmune encephalitis is a very uh, rapidly um, emerging area of interest uh, that uh, it's a rare set of conditions, but the, when it does occur, it, it can be catastrophic. Uh, and uh, uh, the process of making the diagnosis of autoimmune encephalitis is, is involved. The treatment is also involved. Um, right now, we don't have FDA-approved treatments for autoimmune encephalitis, but I think that is ultimately going to go the way that NMO went to, where we had off-label therapies that were used for a long period of time, and then you know, finally randomized controlled trials showing us that uh, certain treatments were, in fact, efficacious. So I think this is another area of general education that the neurological community could uh, benefit from. And uh, there are a number of uh, abstracts and posters and presentations at the AAN meeting uh, that are on the topic of, of um, autoimmune encephalitis. So I think this is one of those areas that's really uh, just about uh, ready to change very quickly. And I think it would be great to, to see uh, to see uh, you know, educational programs on this topic as well. And, and often the, the symptoms are psychiatric in nature. And so sometimes seizures as well, um, you know, if, there, if a patient has a seizure, it, it uh, winds up obviously on the neurology service very typically, but uh, with the psychiatric manifestations of these conditions, sometimes initially patients are triaged into psych care and the encephalitis can be missed initially. So, um, you know, it's, you know, you don't, you don't treat a, a patient who's got an autoimmune encephalitis with, um, you know, psychotherapy, of course, or, or only, only with uh, medications to reduce agitation. So it's very important that uh, psychiatrists be aware of this, that neurologists be aware of these conditions, that people working in the ER uh, be aware of them as well, so that the patients can be appropriately uh, triaged and cared for. Music